You know, um, in watching children and grandchildren grow up, you get a little idea of uh, uh, genetics and personalities and what have you. And uh, I've always been a strong believer in, uh, uh, you know, nature versus n nurture. I've always said that I kind of felt like it was 51% nature and 49% uh, nurture. But after listening to a very prominent uh, talk on genetics, I'm way off. According to one of the renowned authorities whose names I don't remember, it's 110% uh, genetics. But the genetics also has a pre-programmed you know, nature or environmental part to it. So, And what really convinced me was that he made the remark that two cloned animals and we know that the genes can influence things like hair color and that, and that kind of thing. And, and you could have, like say, a, a black sheep and a cloned black sheep be white. Uh -oh. Well, I guess I don't understand you know, that much about really how it works, if anybody does. But at any rate, I've always noticed that little kids that have to get up and stand in front of everybody, and they're always performing. And I'd say, oh, that child has a entertainment gene. So I have to kind of explain or excuse myself, I have a defective gene as well. And that's the efficiency gene. Uh, I like and I respond to things that are very efficient. So things that excite me are things like uh, energy scavenging, you know, 99.9% uh, .9 efficiency ratings, those kinds of things. So anyway, with that as a background, you might understand what, why this topic <laughs> is being presented. Uh, we're all, we all know about equation solving, and we all know different ways of solving equations, but in, my, in this particular scenario, if I can figure this is forward, okay. In this situation, uh, the boss tells you, you electronic engineer, that he will finance an all-expense-paid two-week vacation on a paradise island which doesn't allow any electronics. That means cell phones, computers, internet, etc. Oh Even a slide rule is considered anti-vacation and not allowed. But the vacation begins next week. What do you do? I've got two days of heavy design work to do that involves equation solving and what am I going to do? Well, that part of the problem is easy. I, you know, I can uh, pick my favorite. And I'm looking for a particular picture because I, I couldn't find the one. When I was in the Caribbean many years ago, um, uh, some of you remember Jim Dierres? Yes. Okay. Oh, for sure. I'm married with that. Okay. Uh, they were best buds and lived together close to each other anyway. But anyway, Jim Dierris uh, was very famous for his HP 41 projects. And Jim's background is not a formal engineering background. And yet his understanding is astounding. So he was able to design some interfaces to the 41 that just blew the world away. But uh, Jim was down in the Caribbean on an island. And I went down to visit for a week. And I took a, a boat, a... Uh, catamaran out to another island and we came into this beautiful harbor and it wasn't a, a, a desolate island and it was not maybe as big as Catalina but Catalina was just a nice similar thing so that's what I would have picked now here's some of the equations that I need to solve so uh, I have some of my equations as an example and I'm going out to this smaller island on a helicopter, and I, I'm, I have additional constraints, no power usage, no weight, no electronics, and I guess, no hope. Obviously, I have to go old school. What method, what technique, what aids do I use? And I, wanna, I, I expect 90% of you to give the answer, but wait. It 
is one word starting with a letter early in the alphabet. If you want quantitatively, let's say the first quarter of the alphabet. The other hint, it'll fit into my shirt pocket. What is it? You all know it. Lock table. Huh? Lock table. Book of, how, do I design how, how do well, I just add a book of lock tables? And I solve these equations, and maybe you can do it, but I need more than that. <laughs> Oh, this is great. I love it. All right. That's because you know the answer. <laughs> what? You love it because you know the answer. No, I love it because I expected you to know the answer, and it's not forthcoming. Okay. Calculator. Here's the answer. The solution is to use graphical aids to solve equations. These are also known as graphs, nomographs, or nomograms. And nomographs is the term that I prefer. Here's an example. We have a uh, two scales here. There are right angles. These are linear. This is a 45 degree line here. That scale is linear. This scale here is determined or calibrated or scaled or, or made by taking the value of, of this scale, this uh, let's say 40, and I go over to 40 over here, and then I draw a line, and that becomes half of the 40, and that's 20. And I can do that okay, over yeah. here, and I, I get another point, and I now can scale. I have a scaling factor, and I can scale this. So I can construct this using very simple techniques. And this graph, or nomograph, solves the equation of two resistors connected in parallel, okay? Which is their product divided by their sum. And it has a very interesting quality to it. I have an equation, I have three variables, I can take any two variables and get the third. If I know the total, uh, and if I know the total and one of the resistors, I just draw my line through those two points and I get the other. <laughs> now this particular one is one that I modified from what I found somewhere. But, and if I were doing this from an electrical engineering perspective, this scale here would be at least one decade. And then uh, I would mark specific values now, this would go from, say, 10, go to at least 100 on this, both axes. And I would put, say, red tick marks for the standard resistor values that I could buy at the store. So now, I not only can solve this equation for the values of the resistors, but I can now know how close I am to actual values. In other words, I can take a standard value here and tweak it to a standard value here and I can see what their total is. I can play with the ruler on this nomograph, print it on a piece of paper, which I can fold up and put it in my shirt pocket. Okay? So we have flexibility. We have, well, this is a simple one, and believe me, Nomographs can be made to solve just about any complicated equation you can come up with. Now, creating some of them may be a bit of an issue, a bit of a challenge. Here is a uh, kind of the characteristics which I previously mentioned that the R1, R2 scales are linear, 45 degrees of flow, and this equation is solved from every variable. That's, that's the power the real power, because some equations are rather difficult to solve for some variables. Here's uh, kind of a very simple uh, nomograph. You, and, and a classical nomograph is really consisting of three vertical scales. And that's what this illustrates. Okay. Uh, this is real trivial. It's uh, U1 plus U2 plus U3 equals zero, so we can just keep that very simple and trivial. Uh, 
these are all standard, you know what a scale is and tick marks and, and a value. The only new term related to nomograph would be this thing called an index line or ISO uh, plus that you use. And that line that's represented by the dotted line there is typically a ruler you know, that you use. Now here's a nonlinear scale example. And this is where constructing these things can be challenging. And uh, here we have uh, four scales. Now their, their, their values, their scales uh, are nonlinear. And uh, in order to get this all to work out, the spacing and so forth, that all has to be uh, figured out and designed in. This one is, is the equation of storing of the energy stored in a capacitor. And of course, the higher the voltage that is squared, the greater the energy you can store in a capacitor. So this is an example. And also here, you can't read these, they're not very good, but for example, this is a voltage scale and it's running from 100 volts to 100,000 volts. And over here at the 20,000 volts, it's a spark plug. So you can label your scales. And so one of the advantages of nomographs is that they may be used by untrained, inexperienced people to solve very complicated problems. I had to throw this in because this is the old classical uh, nomograph. I, I'm not going to attempt to explain it, but I just used it to point out that these are logarithmic scales, and you can't see it, uh, these things here, but they are inductors and capacitors and frequency. So if you want to uh, connect an inductor and a capacitor together, you want to know what frequency it's going to resonate at, you could quickly find it with this. Not, not the best quality to, to really see what's going on, but it shows a logarithmic scale. Now here's a multiple equation example. And you can see up here the equations. And this is for uh, capacitance, inductance, dissipation, and quality at one kilohertz. Now if you want to work at 10 kilohertz, you need another number, right? And again, in this case, three equations, uh, six unknowns, and here uh, the scales, depending upon what you're trying to calculate, uh, these are the, the uh, variables involved in the equation. This again is there for a classical, classical electronics engineering type problem. How many people know what a Smith chart is? Oh, fantastic, great. Uh, you want to come up and explain it? <laughs> <laughs> to get into this thoroughly, it probably take you a couple hours. I mean, it is a very, very powerful uh, nomograph. And here's a little illustration. This I uh, stole in part. I modified it from uh, Wikipedia. So, um, whenever you have a transmitter and an antenna, the ideal thing is to say, "I've got a hundred watt transmitter. I want a hundred watts of radiated power from my antenna." But that requires an electrical match. And as you know, when you're dealing with AC circuits, you're dealing with complex numbers. Is that right, Rich? Did I get it right? Complex numbers? Is that right? No. Trip? Okay, no. Um, and we have what's called a VSR, VSWR, voltage standing wave ratio bridge, that we stick between the transmitter and the antenna. And it's got a needle on it. So you tune up the antenna until you get the needle, well, in this case, it's the lowest VSWR. So you keep tuning and dipping it down. And this gives you the ability to understand the impedance matching. You're dealing with uh, complex uh, variables to use a nomograph. Now, one of the interesting issues with nomographs is accuracy. You know, we use our calculators, the cheapest, crummiest calculator, we'll get six, eight, ten digits, right? Not that we need six, eight, or ten digits. But you can construct the nomograph to give you more than reasonable accuracy to solve real problems. So, uh, whenever you research on Smith charts, uh, you will find um, explanations which are not always 
clear, it's kind of in electronics jargon to some extent, other extents it's just simply that the guy who's describing it really doesn't understand it, because it's pretty, pretty advanced stuff. But the primary value is that it illustrates the relationships involved, as you can see by these curves and things. And we can't read, these are scaled numbers, and, and I, I'm not going to get into a Smith chart, but just to be aware of, uh, from an electronics perspective, one of the most famous, most useful, and used to this very day, nomograph is a pre-printed F11 Smith chart in which you then you know, make your calculations. So, we're able to take our island vacation because we're going old school and we're using nomographs. Uh, what are the advantages? Very low cost, it's ink on paper, it's pretty cheap. Run it off on the, you know, the uh, photocopier or, 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 or inkjet printer or whatever you've got. Very easy to use, especially for inexperienced practitioners. No power required. And very complex uh, equations are easily solvable. And it's very fast to use. And you would say, well, you know, uh, the early calculator days, they said, well, calculators were faster than uh, sonobonds. Uh, what's the Chinese name? Abacus, okay? And then you remember for a, year, for a few years they had contests where these people working the abacus and people pressing on the keyboard and so forth and, and uh, eventually of course uh, all those bees went into the trash can. Now there are some disadvantages. They tend to wear out. <laughs> you know, you fold paper five or six times and all of a sudden the creases are not readable. They may be difficult to create. Can you imagine creating a Smith chart? I mean, this, this is a challenge. Uh, limited accuracy, and it's highly specialized uh, for a few equations. So in other words, every one or two or three equations you've got to solve, you have to have a, a specially prepared nominal. But it met all the requirements, and I got all my design work done, and the boss paid for it. There are some references. I wanted, I really wanted to use this book in my research, and I have that book, not this one. This is a, I have an earlier edition than this one, and I couldn't find the book. It's buried somewhere. Uh, but this is one of the classical books. If you look up on the internet on on um, nomographs or nom nomograms, I'm not sure why. There's two different groups calling the same thing by two different names, but some people like uh, nomograph versus nomogram. I learned it as a nomograph. And you will always find comments like, information is hard to find on them, or uh, which ones are really still in use, that kind of thing. But there is a computer program that you can uh, use to create your own nomographs. And, and of course I threw in, because it's the most famous and classically known, there's a very nice tutorial uh, on the Smith chart. Old school graphical equation solving. Is it obsolete? I'm gonna tell you where it's used, but I asked a resident expert in that field, and he says, huh, I never heard of it. No, nomographs are still actively being used in more than this, but this is all I've, uh, I've found. The medical community, there's a lot of complex stuff, uh, even body mass index, there's a lot of stuff that uh, is used in, uh, um, in the medical community where they have nurses, and, and, and they know, well, with this, this, and this, I gotta tell a patient this or that. And so in the medical fields, Nomographs are still being used. In the pilot community, Jeff says no, but uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a homework now assignment. That what? Now that I see them, I know what you're referring to. We don't call them nomographs. They are in our performance section, and they are graphs. 
but we okay. have a performance. And, that, and that's why I use the general term graphical solutions, not limiting them to nomographs because uh, nomographs have very distinct characteristics and um, uh, graphical solutions is broader and so forth. Yeah. For the heck of it, we have over 100 graphs in the back of our emergency manual calculator. And you follow the curve, follow the curve, and the next curve, and the answer spits up the end. I've converted them all to uh, regression and put them in the 41C, so <laughs> it takes me five seconds. But that requires power. Okay, and then, of course, the engineering community, uh, chemical, mechanical, and electronics, that's, that's what I would know. Uh, chemical, Namir, are they, have you run across yes, this? Yes, yes, yeah. It's like a okay. okay. how, how many people, what's this? Modern radio practice in using graphs and charts, May 1934, radio news and <laughs> short wave article. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, I, can I just make a comment? Uh, when I was an innocent young student and I went off to engineering school at Berserkley in 1959, we, every engineering major had to take Engineering 10. And one of the things you learned in there was how to make nomographs, You're kidding. including Z charts. Excellent. See? Okay. How many colleges? Don't ask me if I remember. <laughs> The back. Sir, there's you're in high precision where cut chart um, elevation and air temperature will give you parts per million for a correction factor for your electronics uh, distance uh, here, and that's still applicable for high precision GBS post processing. And 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 be, see, there's a certain natural forces at work that, that plot against this kind of thing. Because if I'm a calculator or computer manufacturer, I don't want people to make me obsolete with a piece of paper. Come on. So they would tend to discourage that naturally. But I just wanted to uh, reminisce maybe of the old days. How many people in here have never used a nomograph? Oh, see, that's what I expected. That's, how, that's what I expected when I asked you what it was, but I kind of sideswiped you a little, blindsided you saying, well, it's early in the alphabet. I was using a more general term, graphical solutions. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. There's a really neat calendar from 2010 um, that, that has nomographs on it. I, I have that in my phone, but if you Google Graphical computing calendar. Um, you'll, you'll find it maybe a few clicks away. You'd probably be able to enjoy it. I think everybody else will enjoy it. I'm sure I will. Really? There is a Python package for making normal graphs, and it's called PyNomo, uh, so that they can have some predefined equations. Then you can do yo. So the, it's a nice. It's PyNomo.org. Just install. I just did. I didn't want to overload it with, you know, because we all search internet. I just wanted to give you a, an overview. So if you want to get into it, it it's fun. It's fun. Richard, would, would you call your paper a, a, a monograph, monograph? A monograph, monograph. <laughs> all right, so. Why? Uh, no, 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 no. Our next presentation.